His voice was unmistakable, his calls legendary, and for 38 seasons we were privileged with his presence in our homes each summer night. Harry Callis was the ultimate conduit. He was the sound of our summers. It's been eight months since his passing, and each day we look back and honor our hero. Hello, everyone, and welcome to a High Hopes podcast. I'm Shay Roddy, and today we have a very, very special guest, and this is me with Kane Callis just moments ago. All right, joining me now, it is the son of the late, great Harry Callis, Kane Callis. And uh, Kane, how have you been? I mean, it's it's been a, a rough year for all of us, but I, I'd certainly imagine for you especially. Yeah, it, it certainly has. I mean, um, you know, it's uh, it just kind of hit me. It just it's kind of a shock, kind of you know, out of out of nowhere. Um, so it's it's been it's been difficult. It's been difficult to say the least. Uh, however, you know, everything that everybody in the community has shown, all the support and um, stuff like that, has really you know helped me and my family. It it obviously is not going to, uh, to you know make it easy, but um, but it uh, you know that has helped. One of the things I'm most interested in from you is your stories, because everyone has a Harry Callis story. I mean, you talk to everyone, and they have a, a Harry story, and that was his his greatness, was his ability to interact with the fans and leave every fan with some memorable story. But you had, you know, such a special relationship with him, and uh, I, I'm interested, you know, you grew up, I guess, at the ballpark somewhat. Uh, you grew up around Rich Ashburn and... What's what's your favorite Harry Callis story? Uh, wow, that's that's a tough question. Um, oh, there's there's there are a couple uh, couple funny stories uh, with with uh, me and me and my dad growing up. Um, one is actually I'm I'm a vocalist, so uh, when I was in high school, I was uh, rehearsing for uh, the show Light the Throb, and uh, we were doing that at the high school, and I was playing. Um, I was playing a leading role in the show, and uh, my father was always very, um, very easygoing. He was a really laid back about everything, very easygoing guy. But the one time I can remember when he got a little bit upset at me is he was getting up the next morning to go record for NFL Films. So he had gone to sleep um, kind of early, and I was downstairs rehearsing for Les Mis. And uh, one of my... Um, one of the scenes in the show, I am I, I, I was playing um, one of the leaders of the French Revolution, and I say to everybody else, "Fire!" as in shoot your gun. Now, so so I was rehearsing, I was seeing my part through, and, and a couple of my lines are "fire, fire." My father woke up; he thought that the house was on fire. He came downstairs, and he was all he was all you know. He he, he didn't know what was going on. He's like, "Son, are you okay?" And um, you know, it was it was funny because that's one of the few times I've seen him upset because he really needed to get some sleep. For uh, for the next day, um, so that was a, that was a, an interesting uh, thing. But he, you know, always loved to come out and see my shows and, and support me in that way. So that was always really nice. <laughs> That's great. And uh, you mentioned in that that you are a vocalist. And let me just let it be known that Harry passed his pipes right along to you because uh, I've seen you sing the national anthem, and you have just an incredible voice. And I know you're studying Thank opera, you. and, and wow, it's in- incredible. Um, but uh, another thing is, I was kind of curious, what, could you say, like, one thing that we, we don't know about Harry? Is there, like, a thing that... Um, well, let's see, uh, there's, um, I mean, one very interesting thing about him is, uh, he, his favorite, uh, type of food, but most people would, you know... You know, my favorite type of food is, is steak. I love the lemon yon. A lot of people love lobster. My dad loved cottage cheese. I don't know what it was, what it was about it, but he just, he, that was uh, his favorite type of food. Whenever people ask him, that's what they'd say. They'd say, cottage cheese, Harry. They'd say, yeah, I love cottage cheese. He used to eat it every night. So I guess there's one thing you, you wouldn't know about it, and that, that could be it. Wow. Um, the memorial service uh, at Citizens Bank Park you, the family chose to have it as a public memorial service, which I think was was fitting, given how many people Harry touched. And, and you spoke at that, and you just did an incredible job. 
Um, what? But that, that was, I guess, there were, there was thousands of people there. They were lining up since the night before, the wee hours of the morning. What, was there a moment when you were there where it just hit you? Like, the magnitude of who your father was and how much the fans loved him back? Yeah, I mean, I always, I always, you know, since growing up, um, however, it wasn't until, uh, you know, then in the past couple months that I really started to realize the effect that he had on the entire community. Um, and to go out there to the service and to see how many people, you know, had come um, and to see that amount of support was, was really touching. Um, uh, another, like, thing I, I guess you were your his youngest son but his, his friendship with uh with rich ashburn whitey and i i'd assume you know you you knew whitey well since your father was always around him is there you know a harry and whitey story that you have um not not really i mean i was i was younger uh when they were around i can't really recall any stories? It was actually uh, it was actually Whitey though who did teach me how to throw a baseball. But that's that's uh, it's interesting that he was the person who taught me how to do that. On the top of my head, I can't I can't really recall um, uh, you know personal Harry Whitey story. Of course, there's always the uh, Celebrity's Pizza story, which is uh, one day during a, a baseball game, um, Whitey uh, you know Whitey often on the air would ask um, or would. Um, would say the steak sponsors, then they were uh, they were vendors that were in the ballpark because he was hungry and he wanted food. So he would make up a fake sponsor um, who who was a, a vendor at the ballpark who did wasn't a real sponsor of the Phillies, just so they'd bring him up food. And the management talked to Richie Ashburn and they said, "Look, Whitey, you know you can't be, you know, just because you're hungry, you can't be saying these sponsors. You can't." And, and why he's like, well, I'm not really sure about, the, you know, the, they're like, look, you can't just say the name of a, of a business or a person without, unless they're one of our sponsors. So uh, one day, um, my dad was doing birthday wishes, which is something that I actually do. And he said, you know, birthday wishes, to, I forget the person's name, Joe Smith or something. And Whitey was like, well, Harry, how come you can say Joe Smith? And he's like, well, it's a birthday wish. So Whitey's like, birthday wishes to the boys at Celebrity's Pizza. And sure enough, they brought him up, uh, you know, three pizzas from downstairs, and he was able to give away, get around that whole thing by uh, just giving birthday wishes to them. So that's, that was funny. That's a great story. And another thing I wanted to touch on is, you know, well, what made your father, I think, so uh, appreciated and loved was his ability to find time for everyone. And whether you were a, a part-time peanut vendor or the owner of the organization, he he thought of you equally. And I, I was just wondering quickly, because we're running out of time here, um, what, how, how do you kind of live your father's legacy and take that and apply it to your own life? Sure, I mean, uh, kind of growing up with my father, I, I kind of got the sense of what is right and wrong in the world. And to me, just to see how he interacted with everybody, had a had a major impact on me. There's you know there's no um, there's no reason to to not interact with everybody because I mean that's where like my father that's where I get my happiness. Just you know I, I try to be friends with everybody and I try to interact uh, with everybody. You can it doesn't matter their socioeconomic position or anything like that because there's something to be learned from everybody. And you know to be honest, you can have a good time. You can have fun with everybody. So I kind of just. That's kind of, you know, something that my father passed on to me, I think. Kane Callis, thank you so much. Sure, thank you. That's Kane Callis, son of the legendary Hall of Fame broadcaster Harry Callis. And uh, my thanks as well to Comcast Sportsnet, Asher Lethbridge Simon, and to all of you for listening. We gotta go. Thanks for listening, everyone. Good night.